Help support the companies that support our community. All right, this is the mandrel for the jig. It's identical to the bottle stopper mandrel, except it doesn't have the flute cut in it for doing threads. We're gonna thread that on. Just like that. This is the offset plate that we're gonna to use to make the pendant. So it's numbered on the back side of it here. So to do the pendant to start out, the when you get the jig, it actually comes with these two washers. So you wanna put those on first because we're gonna use the center hole to put the pendant template on. So you need to offset or put those washers back there so that when you screw this on, it actually goes all the way down. So this plate right here comes with three different sizes they're like that when you get them what i did was take a double double-sided tape put it on there and just a thin piece of plywood so i'm going to screw that onto there just like so I'll lock that down so here's a piece of scrap wood i got laying around the shop i've probably been saving it for years i know you have tons of scrap wood laying around your shop that you can't bear to get rid of so a piece of maple pearl so i'm going to Stick that on there with double-sided tape. Then here's the double-sided tape I use. It works fantastic for this. Put a little piece on. Slice it off there. And then we're gonna stick this piece of wood right to it. Hang on. All right, I need to find that little corner. There we go. All right. So the tape is pressure sensitive too. So go ahead and put a piece of wood up there, make sure it's all centered. And then we will get it all lined up and then smash it together. All right, so what, what I'm gonna do now is bring the tailstock up, true this up, and then it's, thick too so I'm going to bring down the the width of it just a little bit too bring the tailstock up put some pressure on it just like that you have to make that little popping noise too all right there we go and I have a late speed set at about 2500 rpms I'll cut that off real, real quick. And I'm gonna turn the dust collector on real quick and just, and true this up. All right, I have it trued up. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the tailstock away. And this is gonna be the back side of it. So I'm going to make sure that this isn't bowed out at all. I want it either flat or concave, so I'll keep checking it. I'm gonna round the corner over here and then start working on that. Okay. 
then just just use the edge of your chisel to make sure it's still a little bowed if it's rocking it's going to barely touch on the tape so you want it want a good seal on the tape so make sure that it's if anything concave just just a little bit Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Bless you. Thank you. All right, there we go. That is perfect. So I'm going to sand that, sand that up real quick. I'm going to turn the dust collector back on, run through all the grits, and then we'll pop that off there and flip it around. All right, that's all cleaned up, ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this off. Just like so. And we will flip it right around. Put it right back on here. Try and get it lined up the best you can. And it, even if it's not perfect, you can you can come around the sides and, and touch it up a little bit. So, because it is like pressure sensitive too, you can actually just like, Put it on there just a little bit and it will come back off. So I'm going to play around with it until I get it. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. And smash it together. And then we can come around and start working on the front of it. All right. What I'm going to do is just kind of clean up that edge first and then we'll start working on putting some beads on this thing. That's what I really wanted to do was use the beading tool. It just, I did one the other day just to see if it would actually work once you throw it off center and it looks really cool. So let me get the edge cleaned up here real quick and then we'll put some beads on this thing. And the lay speed's back up to 2,500. use the beating tool on now. All right, now that we have all that done, I'm gonna go ahead and take the little plate off, take these two washers off, because we're gonna move it over to the number two hole there and put it right back on. And now that that button isn't in the center, it, you could screw this all the way down. So I'll just put it on like that, lock it down. Lock that down. Make sure everything's tight. So there's ten different positions you can put it in the in the back here, and you can also move the button around to in any of the ten holes on the front side to get different patterns too. So I'll put some pictures up at the end showing you know just different things you can do with that. But I I was kind of messing around and I thought the beading tool would. I've never seen one that was beaded before. So that's why I tried it in the first place. So. It looks really cool. So let's bring this up here. We'll get the beading tool and we'll mark it first with a pencil on the front side here. Put the pencil on it, line it up, and that is where it, it will cut. So you just want to make sure that you have enough room for like a for a uh, a hole for it to hang the actual pendant. So we're going to go ahead and start with that one and then we'll move down and actually bead the whole thing. But when you turn it on, you can be able to see right where that line is. So you put your tool up there and you can start cutting. So when you're doing this, because the beading, because it is going to be cutting air when you get out on the, on the things, move it up, crank this bead up. I turned it all the way up to 3000 when I was doing it. The first cut, Actually, that's a little close, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to erase that because I just realized I don't want it to cut all the way around. I'm going to move it out here a little bit. There we go. So it comes off. There we go. 
And got the lathe up to 3,000. Everything's good. And you can see that line that I didn't put up there. And then once you make your first bead on there, you know right, right where that line is. You can just keep working your way down. So cut just like that. You know what? It went. It's a little bit too far. I'm going to come back and do one more on the inside. I've only done one other one, so kind of, there we go, that works. And then we'll put the hole for the center right there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and keep coming down and I'll do, it looks like probably two more down here. I'm going to go ahead and beat that last little spot right there. I mean, it's only going to be like half a beat. There we go. It's just a cool design. So with this too, I'll show the pictures at the end, but you can actually move this to a different position and it'll, it would cut a bead across this, the face of this, if you wanted that. But it just, I think I'm going to do maybe, I kind of want to do one more in there, but I don't want to make it too small. I'm just going to go in with the, with the tool and pop through. So to make your hole for the, for the chain or, or rope or whatever you're doing. So this is all on center now. Let it speed right back up. And you can go right through this and you'll see where the tape is when it comes through, comes through the other side. Hasn't gone through yet. I got a little bit, a little bit more. sand that up get that all cleaned up that has a hole in it there and you'll be able to put a, a rope through that or a cord all right I'm gonna that one is a little rough I'm gonna touch that one up again with the, with the beading tool just real quick Hopefully that, that fixed it. 
There we go, that's better. All right, I can sand that. Turn the laser speed back down, get that all cleaned up. If you do have any that are a little bit rough, you can just kind of touch them up a little bit. You don't want to sand on these on these too much because it you don't want to flatten the tops of the beads out. But you can hit them a little bit. All right. Then really, it's you probably want to wait to put the oil on until you get until you get it off there. But once you get run through the rest of your grits you just pop that off of there and it, that's the only real spot you need to sand on for something like this maybe run around the outside just a little bit i'll do that i'll run around the outside with the rest of the grits and run through those and then we'll get this off there and get some oil on it all right i ran through all the grits up to 600 on the inside so i want to go ahead and touch up the the edge just a little bit so we'll go ahead and move it back to center and don't forget you got to put the washer back on when it's on the or in the center hole. Just like that. Go ahead and run, run through all the grits out here. There we go. I have it all sanded up. Just take a razor knife, just be careful with it. Pop right off. And so the hole is a little bit, got a little bit of, you know, I don't know, I don't want to say torn grain, but it's just kind of messed up a little bit because it's so thin. So just take a piece of sandpaper and kind of roll it up into a little cone. And just like that. And we'll smooth it all out. You can run through the grits on this too if you want. Cleans it up just like that. All right. And for the oil, I'm just going to use the old trusty walnut oil on it. little scraps like this this piece of maple burl again and I really like the beads the way the effect it gives with the beads it's the pictures I'll show you at the end here they're like line grooves cut in them to create like different patterns and things so you can move this thing around in so many different different positions to create just cool stuff but this is just something I thought I'd give a try there we go. This is the one I just did for the video, and this is the one I made a couple of days ago. So with the jig, you can like duplicate the size on it. It's just super cool, and the way you can move it around, you can just duplicate patterns, and it, as far as the patterns go, it is pretty much endless. I'll put some pictures up here. These are from the website gallery. I'll put a link down below in the description to that as well, and there's just a ton more stuff on there. It's uh, just you can m do uh, like a pendant and matching earrings so the jig actually comes with three buttons so you can do different size earrings different size pendants but yeah it's just a great way to use up little scrap wood so i don't know if you noticed robin sneezing in the video too so her and i have been sick since we got back the day after we got back from the swat <laughs> the symposium and it is just dragging on Turns out it's not COVID, it's just a horrible cold that will not go away. But hopefully we'll, we're on the mend. All right, hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you next week. Take care.